A lot of people think capitalism exploits the masses for the benefit of a small minority. Now, one interesting question we could ask about that claim is, is it true? But another just as important but neglected question is, even if it is true, what is the alternative to capitalism? The usual suggestion is political regulation and control. But if our concern is to minimize exploitation, we need to ask whether this alternative really makes sense. After all, citizens are in a position of tremendous vulnerability relative to the state, and lobbyists, bureaucrats, and elected officials will often be tempted to exploit that vulnerability for their own private gain. Think of the way in which our political institutions subsidize large agribusinesses, bail out big auto companies, cartelize the banking industry through the Federal Reserve System, and so on. All of these policies benefit the interests of the economically powerful and politically well-connected at the expense of ordinary citizens. That's not a free market at work. That's big government. And politics is unlike markets in that political exchanges aren't voluntary. When the government wants to use your money to bail out GM, you don't have the right to say no. And this means there's no guarantee that the exchange will be mutually beneficial. When politics is involved, one party's gain usually comes at someone else's expense. Politicians gain from the contributions they receive from big business. And big business gains from the favors it receives from government. Sure, those favors have a cost. But because government has the power of coercion, it can force third parties to pay that cost. Those who can afford political influence get the benefits, and those who cannot afford it suffer the consequences. This is how politics works. And it's not because we have bad people in office and need to get nicer people in. It's because of the structural nature of politics. Because the state has the power to impose its decisions by force on the public. Just hoping that the state will use its influence on behalf of the vulnerable isn't enough. We need to ask ourselves, if we really want to reduce the amount of exploitation in the world, is increasing the power of the state really the best way to do it?